Hi everyone and welcome to this week's worship workout. This week we are digging into a really awesome, powerful worship song, Cornerstone. It's a relatively new song written around 2012 and I'm sure that you probably know it well. What you might not know, however, is that it's actually based on and really heavily based on a hymn that's nearing 200 years old now uh, called Solid Rock. In fact, the verses in Cornerstone are practically unchanged from this 200 year old hymn. Now normally at this point in the video I would play you a snippet of the song that we were looking at but um, as I'm sure you probably know Cornerstone very well, I thought we could look at the original hymn that inspired it. So take a little listen, this is Solid Rock. My hope is Well, I'm sure you can hear the inspiration in Cornerstone from that, right? I love that they've left so much of the song unchanged. The weight behind many of those lines really has carried through the generations. And I find it amazing to think that these words are still belted out in churches across the globe today. It's a hymn that stood the test of time. However, because it was written so long ago, and because it's remained largely unchanged, there is some language within the song that's not necessarily easy for us to gauge the meaning of at first glance. There's a couple of lines in particular that really come to mind. So what we're gonna do today is take a real look into those lines and find the weight and gold within them. Trust me, it's definitely there. Firstly, how about this line from the second verse? My anchor holds within the veil. I mean, it sounds lovely, right? But what does it mean? What is the veil? Why does my anchor hold there? Where has this line come from? To answer that, let's really quickly read a couple of Bible verses from the book of Hebrews, because I think they're game changers in helping us understand how amazing this line is and the heart behind it. Let's read Hebrews 6, 19 and 20. We have this hope as a sure and steadfast anchor of the soul, a hope that enters into the inner place behind the curtain, where Jesus has gone as a forerunner on our behalf, having become a high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. That one line in this song does such an amazing job of capturing this key moment in the foundation of our faith. This line reminds us that we have hope because of what Jesus did when he entered into that most holy place and tore the curtain or veil, as this song says, that divided God and man. So that now, in him, we can be confident to come before the Father. And it's there that we anchor our hope. That's where our hope and faith are grounded. Our anchor holds within the veil. When I first had this explained to me, it completely transformed the way that I sang that line and actually as a result, the whole song. And I hope that it does for you as well. The center of my being is grounded in the knowledge and understanding of what Jesus did for me. So the other line I want us to have a little look at is in the first verse and it says this, I dare not trust the sweetest frame. So what is the sweetest frame? because it's, it's really easy for us actually to kind of unintentionally skip over that bit when singing this song, but it's really important. What is the sweetest frame? Well, that frame is anything earthly or worldly that from the outside looks like it's going to sustain and fulfill us. Things that look sweet on the outside, but in reality we know won't fulfill us. I'm talking about things like finances, or success or material things, or even things like 
family or friends or our own righteousness, whatever it is, it could be a number of things. And they're all frames, but we've likely all got a sweetest frame. We've individually probably got one thing that we can be tempted to chase after. And the heart behind this line is to encourage us to fiercely avoid trusting in these frames. I dare not, it says, I dare not. It's a constant reminder to us that the only thing that truly satisfies, that truly sustains, and the only thing we should truly put our trust and our hope in is the complete and full work of Christ. We dare not trust the sweetest frame God, but we wholly trust in Jesus' name. I hope these little insights into a couple of these trickier lines really help you worship through this song. I pray they reveal more of God to you and help you glorify his name. And I pray that they help you place God as your cornerstone. If you don't know, a cornerstone in a building is the integral and foundational stone that basically the building needs to stand. Every other stone then is placed in reference to it. So let's put God then in his rightful place. Let's make sure he is our foundation, Christ alone, cornerstone. Amen. I will see you guys next week.